Friday, 5 p.m. Jerusalem time from NBC Studios. This is NBC Journal with Bassam Vahir and Sana Abu Samra. EU missions regret extension of Israeli ban on Palestinian institutions in East Jerusalem. Waqf officials announced reopening of Al-Aqsa Mosque Gate. Government ready to cope with any Israeli deductions on Palestinian tax revenues. Hello and welcome again. Israeli occupation forces detained 509 Palestinians in January from occupied Jerusalem, the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, including 89 children and 8 women, according to Palestinian prisoners advocacy groups. It said this brings the number of Palestinians held in Israeli prisons to around 5,700 by January 31, 2019. They include 48 women and 230 children under 18 years of age. In addition, 95 Palestinians are held in administrative detention without charge or trial for various periods of time in January. 50 of them were newly detained, bringing the total number of administrative, um, administrative detainees to 500. Israeli ho is holding 18 journalists, including three women, three held in administrative detention, two serving life sentences, and two long prison term. On Sunday, Israeli occupation forces evicted a Palestinian family from their home in the old city of occupied East Jerusalem after an Israeli court had ruled that the home was built on a land that belongs to Jewish settlers. The police forcibly evicted Hatem Abu Asab and his family from their home while beating him up in front of his family. Witnesses told Wafa, the Abu Asab family have been living in the stone-made house for the past 65 years, but Israel's Supreme Court ruled that they did not own the plot of land upon which the home was built and thus ordered their eviction. There is an estimated settler population of around 200,000 Jews living in East Jerusalem alongside about 250,000 original Palestinians. Millions of Palestinians have lived in the diaspora since the beginning of the Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territories, where the Israeli occupation forces have evicted them from their homes and streets and seized their lands and memories. The issue of Palestinian refugees has become a cornerstone in ending the suffering that has been insoluble for more than 50 years. Sunday night, similar scenes were embedded in the old city of Jerusalem and meters away from Al-Aqsa Mosque. Israeli occupation forces seized the house of a Ba'asab family, who has been living there since 1952, and expelled the 10-member family to the street by an Israeli court order. The house was handed over to Israeli settlers who raised the white and blue flags above the house in the constantly repeated celebration of the expulsion of Palestinians in the old city. The family spent a night in a new place and began to search for a new home in a city where the Israeli occupation forces continues the Judaization of Jerusalem quickly. In al Baqa quarter in the old town of the occupied Jerusalem, 20 meters from Al-Aqsa Mosque, Abu Asab family lived for decades before being expelled. Around 8.30 on Sunday night, Israeli occupation forces consists of 300 soldiers entered the house of Abu Asab and evacuated them from their own home to let settlers live there. It is worth it to mention that Israeli Supreme Court has approved the evacuation of hundreds of Palestinians from their homes in the town of Silwan, south of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, last November and began the plan simultaneously in other areas of occupied Jerusalem to replace Israeli settlers, where more than 400 houses in the old city of Jerusalem have been seized by the Israeli occupation. A number of UN officials and non-governmental organizations called last month to stop plans of displacing Palestinians from the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood of occupied East Jerusalem and 32 Palestinians, including six children from Sabah family, face imminent eviction from their homes and forcible deportation. A European Union statement in January said settlement plans, including evacuation, were increasing in Sheikh Jarrah and they reiterated its strong opposition to Israeli settlement policy and measures taken in this context, such as the evacuation and the demolition of Palestinians' houses. Hanim Baker, NBC. A recently sealed gate inside Al-Aqsa Mosque compound was reopened, announced Palestinian Muslim Waqf officials on Wednesday. Acting Supreme Judge of Jerusalem, Sheikh Wasif al-Bakri, announced the Israeli police removed the lock and chain they had placed a day earlier on the metal gate, leading to Bab al-Rahmi gate. 
on the eastern wall of Jerusalem's old city and released all Palestinians detained during ensuing tensions. He stated that the crisis arising from the Israeli police closure of Metal Gate and step that caused a great amount of tensions in Jerusalem was resolved and the situation was restored to the status quo that existed before the closure. This came a day after Israeli military police sealed the metal gate leading to a large waqf-owned structure near Bab al-Rahmi, also known as the Golden Gate, a move that was perceived by Palestinian Muslim worshippers as a harbinger to the division of the mosque compound and a location of the eastern section of Israeli Jewish settlers. Prime Minister Rami Hamdullah and Japanese Ambassador Takeshi Okobo signed a grant aid agreement worth of approximately $60 million. The Prime Minister's office said in a press release that the grant aid, which amounts to $16 million, would be allocated for improving the solid waste coll collection and transport system. The project provides the Joint Service Council, comprised of local government units, municipalities and village councils, with equipment and vehicles for solid waste management, such as waste collection vehicles compactors and containers, thereby contributing to the improvement of the living environment of residential areas, protection of natural environment and enhancement of governmental services for local communities. Prime Minister of the Palestinian government Rami Hamdallah said on Saturday that the government has developed scenarios to cope with any potential deductions by Israel off the tax revenues the latter collects on behalf of the Palestinian government. Speaking during an official tour of a stone-cutting factory in Bethlehem district, south of the West Bank, Hamdallah said scenarios have been put into place to deal with any deduction in tax revenues equal to amounts of the salaries of the government pays to the Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails and the families of those killed by the Israeli occupation forces. The families of the martyrs and the prisoners have a right and a duty upon us. As President Abbas has said, the salaries are our duty and a debt owed by us, the Prime Minister noted. On behalf of the Executive Committee of the Palestine Liberation Organization, Hanan Ashrawi noted in a statement that the U.S.-sponsored meeting in Warsaw between 13 and 14th of February fails to meet requirements of serious diplomacy. Ashrawi added that the upcoming meeting in Warsaw embodies the irresponsible power politics that the current U.S. administration is attempting to impose on the international community. Rather than leading a constructive and responsible global engagement based on international law and equality, this administration prefers the dynamic of unilateralism, coercion and hostility that will entrench conflicts rather than resolve them. In his address to the Committee on the Exercise of the Inalienable Rights of the Palestinian People, which was established by the UN General Assembly in 1975, United Nations Secretary General 
and Antonio Guterres said on Friday that the going humanitarian crisis in Gaza must be immediately addressed. He, undercover, he underscored that 2 million Palestinians of the Gaza Strip remain mired in increasing poverty and unemployment with no access to adequate health, education, water and electricity, leaving young people with little prospect of a better future. Gutierrez expressed that the UN firmly supports the Palestinian reconciliation and the return of the legitimate Palestinian government to Gaza as an integral part of the future Palestinian state. Member of the Executive Committee of the Palestine Liberation Organization, Ahmed Mejdalani, stated on Sunday that Israel is now attempting to destroy the Palestinian Authority through more financial sanctions in partnership with the United States administration. In a press statement, Mejdalani said that these attempts are done through more sanctions and procedures in violations of international law and the resolutions of international legitimacy by imposing a financial blockade of the PA. Merjdalani condemned plans by the Israeli government to deduct from the tax revenues it collects on behalf of the Palestinian Authority equal to the amounts of the salaries the PA pays to the Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails and the families of those killed by the Israeli occupation force. At least 20 Palestinians, including a child, were injured by live bullets on Friday as Israeli forces attacked hundreds of protesters at Gaza border, according to the Ministry of Health. The forces fired a live bullets and rubber-coated steel rounds at the protesters who gathered at many in camp pits along the border, injuring 20 protesters by live bullets, three of them critically injured, including a child. Some of the wounded were moved to hospital, others were treated in the field play hospital. In a statement issued by the European Union representative in agreement with the EU heads of mission in Jerusalem and Ramallah, the EU missions expressed deep regret over Israel's extension of the ban on Palestinian institutions in East Jerusalem, including the Orient House and the Arab Chamber of Commerce and Industry, which have now been prevented from operating for the past 18 years. The representative highlighted that the EU missions in Jerusalem and Ramallah believes that there is a strong need for such institutions which should be allowed to find function as focal points for Palestinians in East Jerusalem. The European Union has a clear and consolidated position on Jerusalem. EU will not recognize any changes to the pre-1967 borders, including Jerusalem, other than those agreed by the parties, the statement concluded. The United Nations Human Rights Council is planning to issue seven resolutions against Israel during March, according to Israel news outlets. Israeli Channel 2 reported that a report of the Commission inquiry into the Gaza fence and the blacklist of businesses operating inside illegal Israeli settlements and beyond the Green Line will be among the resolutions to be made. The UN Special Coordinator's report in the Palestinian lands will also be reviewed, in addition to the Goldstone Report of 2009 and Israeli violations in occupied Jolan. Israeli violations of the international law will also be reviewed by the UN Human Rights Council. Prime Minister Morawiecki will not attend a Jerusalem summit after Benjamin Netanyahu suggested Polish complicity during Holocaust. Poland's Prime Minister Morawiecki has cancelled a trip to Israel in the wake of reported remarks made by his Israeli counterpart suggesting Polish complicity during the Holocaust, an aide in his office told Polish media on Sunday. A government spokeswoman confirmed to the Reuters news agency that Prime Minister Morawiecki will not attend the summit and that Poland will send its foreign minister instead. The summit of four Central and Eastern European countries is said to be held in Jerusalem this week. On Saturday, Abdullah Jabbarin, a Palestinian from Umm al-Fahim town, northwest of Jenin, was forced to demolish a steel structure used as a warehouse upon receiving a demolition notice by the Israeli authorities. Jabbarin received a demolition notice for his warehouse, pointing out that he would be forced to pay the cost of demolition an additional fine if he does not carry out the demolition. This steel structure, Jabbarin said, was constructed a year and a half ago to store his farming equipment. Israeli use, Israel uses the pretext of building without a permit to carry out demolitions of Palestinian-owned homes on a regular basis. On Friday afternoon, dozens of Palestinian protesters suffered tear gas suffocation as Israeli forces suppressed the weekly Berlin march west of the central occupied West Bank city of Ramallah. Israeli forces fired live bullets, rubber-coated steel bullets, tear gas bombs and stun grenades to suppress protesters. Several suffered tear gas suffocation. Locals, international and Israeli peace activists took part in the march. Belain is one of the most active Palestinian villages in peaceful organized opposition against Israeli policies as residents have protested every Friday for 12 consecutive years and have often been met with tear gas and rubber-coated steel bullets from Israeli forces.
Two Palestinian photojournalists based in the besieged Gaza Strip won awards at the 76th Picture of the Year International Competition of the Missouri School of Journalism in Columbia, United States, one of the most prestigious schools of journalism worldwide. Mohammed Salim Jadallah, working for Reuters, noted that this picture capturing mourning brothers of Palestinian killed by Israeli forces along the Gaza border won the Award of Excellence for the Picture Story category. Mohammed Asad, a freelance photojournalist, also won the Award of Excellence for his picture of Faris Sirsawi, a 12-year-old, as he holds on to a stretcher while paramedics were trying to evacuate him after he was shot in the chest by Israeli occupation forces. Sirsawi succumbed to his injuries shortly afterwards. The company for the reconstruction and development of the Jewish quarter in the old city of Jerusalem invested more than 200 million shekels into settlement projects in Jerusalem's old city. The company is reportedly working to upgrade the Jewish quarter, which is located in the old city and will cost more than 200 million shekels. Iramim, an NGO, noted that the use of national parks and tourist sites serves the goal of transforming the Palestinian neighborhoods in and around the old city, including Silwan, Atur, Ras Ramud, and Sheikh Jarrah from a densely populated Palestinian area into one sprawling tourist site that bolsters Israeli control of the area and access to it. Israeli occupation forces bulldozed land belonging to Palestinians at the eastern entrance to the town of Deir Nidham, north of Ramallah in the occupied West Bank, said a local activist. Saleh Tamimi, the coordinator of the Land Defense Committee, said Israeli occupation forces, accompanied by a number of heavy machinery and bulldozers, stormed the town of proceeded to raise the land belonging to three local residents. Tamimi reported that this Israeli measure is clearly intended to expand the settlement of Halamish, which has been growing in the area at the expense of Palestinian villages. Dozens of Palestinian students on Thursday morning suffocated from tear gas fired by Israeli occupation forces near a school in the southern West Bank city of Hebron. Palestinian security sources said that Israeli occupation forces clashed with students in the vicinity of Tariq Min Ziyad Secondary School in the southern part of Hebron city, firing tear gas canisters toward the school compound, causing dozens to suffocate from excessive tear gas inhalation. Paramedics treated the students at the scene. Tariq bin Ziyad School is one of the nine Palestinian schools located in the H2 area of Hebron, which falls under Israeli military control. Students have to go through Israeli military checkpoints to access their schools. And now moving on to University News. Thabat Khatib, first Palestinian neurologist to patent at neurological science. 27-year-old Palestinian neurologist Thabat Marwan Khatib is ostensibly the first neurological researcher to patent the development of brand new pharmaceutical combinations that affect the neurons and improve their performance in many ways. These combinations, she says, may be a good remedy to various neurological diseases, especially Alzheimer's disease. Khatib, who comes from the city of Jenin in the occupied West Bank, completed her PhD degree in applied neuroscience with distinction from the University of Aberdeen in the UK in March 2018. Prior to this, she completed a Master's of Life Sciences in 2014 with a focus on cancer research from the Graduate School at Al Najah National University in Palestine. Her doctoral thesis studies the brain and nerve cells and the way they work in the normal state as well as the changes that occur in the brain during neurological diseases. The thesis, th the thesis then moves to apply this knowledge by using different techniques to find treatments for patients with neurological diseases. Al Najah hosts Dr. Rinaldo Minaya, U.S. Fulbright Specialist and Legal Expert from New York University. On February 11, 2019, Professor Meher Nechi, acting president of Najah University, received Dr. Minaya, a Fulbright Specialist on Mass Incarceration and Criminal Justice, and an international consultant on various global organizations, focusing on penal reform and rule of law. Professor Meher Nechi welcomed Dr. Minaya and briefed him of Najah academic programs for BA, MA, and PhD levels. 
He also talked about the university's academic and research achievements and stressed the importance of attracting distinguished international experts from prominent international universities to share their experience. He noted that the university is dedicated to being globally connected with international partners by developing staff and student exchange and conducting joint research. The guest in turn expressed his delight for being at Al Najah and wished that the visit would result in further cooperation in different areas of mutual interest. As part of his visit, Dr. Malaya gave a lecture to law students and staff members on international law and criminology. These are the news of the week. Thank you for watching. For more details, visit our website, nn.ps. See you next Friday.